everyone. Um, today we're going to go over our combo note. I told you this note was coming. It is a note that is uh, works like an installment where you make cash interest payments, um, but at the same time then you borrow the money up front and then you pay a lump sum at the end. So it kind of works as a combination of the two. Uh, something that um, kind of would look something like this if you as an investor if you bought a corporate bond Let's say you give them uh, $10,000 on January 1st and it compounds um, annually at 10% and they're semi-annual payments and you, you, you lend them the money for five years. The way that would look is you give them the $10,000 up front and it compounds at 5% or 10%. So 10,000 times 10% is $1,000. But since there's semi-annual payments, there would be a payment every six months in the amount of five hundred dollars because interest equals principal times rate times time. So if the principal is ten thousand, the rate is ten percent, and the time is half. That's how I'm getting the five hundred dollars. So every six months, if you gave them ten thousand dollars every six months, you get five hundred bucks. So so uh, in the first year, you get a five hundred dollar payment, five dollar five hundred dollar interest payment at the end of the year, and then the same thing would happen in year two, year three, year four, year five. So over the five years, you would get $5,000 in interest, and at the end, you would get your $10,000 back. So that's kind of how a combo note works. But the way when corporations borrow money, um, there's the face value of the note, which we've already kind of talked about, and then there's the face rate. However, from the time that we agree upon the face value and the face rate, the interest rates are constantly changing. And so if you've been watching over the last couple of weeks, our interest rate, our Fed rate, they cut down to zero again. And so if you have a note out there that's paying, let's say, 5%, and now if um, someone goes to borrow money, they, they could borrow it only maybe 3%, that 5% bond becomes more valuable. You could sell that bond at a higher price, and you sell it at a premium of what the face value of the note is. Because why would an investor um, buy my when they could go out and get 3% interest, why would they pay me exactly the same for a 5% rate, face value rate, when, when, they, when they could go out and get it at three? So in order to sell that bond that's stated at 5%, they're gonna sell it at a premium. They're gonna sell it higher than the face value of the note. So interest rates, um, a lot of people uh, look at stock markets and they look at um, stocks going up and down. Well, bonds go up and down too. So there are people who specialize in bond trading. The bond market, the fixed income market is the largest market on the planet. Because especially right now when you look at the government and all the debt that they're issuing right now, that they have to go and issue that debt out in the bond market. So that the $2, two trillion dollar stimulus package that was just passed the, the treasury has to go out and get and raise that $2 trillion. Okay, and they're gonna do that by selling debt. Another way they could also do it, um, and this is getting a little off task, is they could also uh, print money, which they're doing too through quantitative easing in that plan. So some of that $2 trillion is gonna be a computer transaction that's gonna get sent over to the banks and the banks turn around and lend the money back to the federal government. All right, so if you're curious on that topic, just look up quantitative easing in Google and just kind of read about it a little bit. I think every business student, uh, business person should know a little bit about how that works. All right, so let's get back to the discounted bond. Um, I'm gonna kind of backtrack here um, in my slides. So we have a um, three-year note with a 60,000 face value and 8% interest rate, and it's paid annually. So I'm, I'm going pretty easy on you here. So to get the interest payment, interest is principal times rate times time. So 60,000 times 8% times one comes up with a payment of $4,800. So the $4,800 is based off of the face value and the face rate. However, the market rate of interest is higher. It's at 10%. So like the example I started with, the market rate is higher than the face rate. So instead of being issued at a premium, this note is gonna be issued at what is called a discount. So the market rate dictates whether or not the note, the bond gets issued at a premium or discount. So if the market rate is higher than the face rate, it's gonna be issued at a discount. If the market rate is less than the face rate, and that's the the final note we're gonna look at, 
that would be issued at a premium. So what we do here is once we have the face value of the note, the payment, we calculate it by the formula interest equals principal times rate times time. That's the only time we're ever going to use the face value in our problem is to calculate this payment. From here on out, we're going to use the market rate. The market rate then dictates the value of the bond. And when we get this number, when we fill out our roadmap, we're going to keep referring back to the market rate. Compounds once per year for three years. And when we punch that into the calculator, I really want you to get in the calculator again and punch it in, make sure that you're used to using it. You get a present value. Um, of 57,000. So the person who's issuing this bond is going to receive $57,015.78. The face value of the note, though, is still the 60,000. So now when we fill out our roadmap, there's the face value of 60, and there's the curing value. It was issued at a discount, so the difference between the face value and the curing value is the discount account. So remember, the discount account is a contra liability and it carries a debit balance. And as we use up um, that interest, because this dollar amount is going to be recorded in additional interest beyond the interest payment that we're, we're making. So remember on the discounted note that we learned before, the second note, the lump sum note, that discount account represented all future interest expense on the note. All right, so now what we do here is now we're going to make our cash payment on 5117. So there's the 4800. But now when we do the interest expense, we're going to do principal times rate times time. So we're going to use that curing value. So the curing value times 10% times 1 is 5701. Now you look at that and you're saying, wait a second, Navicus, why is the interest expense higher than the cash interest payment? Because we need to lower the discount account because this disc, since the note was issued at the discount, we need to kind of slowly um, take money out of that discount balance. And the way that happens is the difference between these two. So the discount reduction is going to be 901. And then we're, we're going to then increase the curing value by that discount reduction. And we're going to update that discount account. So now if you kind of stop the video, and you're copying this down in your notes like you should be, what you want to do is, as you copy this down on a clean page, you now want to take maybe a stab using pencil on the next line. See if you could get the next line for me. Pause the video and see if you could do it. All right, so hopefully, now that you pause it, you're going to get the cash interest is the same. Now the interest expense, take a guess. Is it going to go up or down? So as we have a higher curing value, the interest expense should go up and, and does. The discount reduction is also going up. And then our discount remaining is now 1,090. So now we stop the video, we could do the last line and we work our way to the face value. The curing value equals the face value. So that's the discounted um, bond. This is the, called the combo note. It's a non-interest uh, bearing lump sum and installment note all in one. All right, so now we're going to take our roadmap and have that roadmap in front of you. But to kind of understand what's going on, um, there's economic events that are occurring um, on the note. And then there's the accounting events that are happening on the note. So when we... Um, when we start off the note, we're receiving 57,000. That's an economic event, but we also have an accounting event. We have to journalize. So at the end of the year, we're not making a payment, but there is an accounting event and that's at adjusting entry. And then we have a cash payment. So the economic event is describing, you know, and I kind of stayed away from this when I went over the first two notes because I didn't want to confuse you. But now that you kind of know what's going on, the economic event is when money is exchanging hands, when cash is exchanging hands. The accounting event is when we have to journalize. So these blue lines that go through, we both have an economic event and an accounting event. Here on the adjusting entry, we only have an accounting event. Here we have both, okay, so forth and so on. So this, this is basically the, the story of what's going on in the note. All right, so now we need to journalize. So issuance. When we issue the note, we always record the cash, what we're receiving, and then we have the discount. The discount, remember, is a contra liability, so it carries a debit balance, and then we have the 60,000 face value. 
So then our first entry is not going to be the payment. Going back to what I just showed you, our next entry is going to be this adjusting entry. So we have to do our interest um, timeline, and we're going to use that roadmap to do that. So on the interest timeline, we're taking this um, interest expense and we're running it out. Um, it looks like we're running out eight twelfths. So eight of the 12 months happened in 2016. So we're going to take this 5701.48 times it by eight twelfths. And that discount reduction, we're also going to multiply it by eight twelfths. And when we do that, there we go. We got our interest expense at 3801. That goes in 2016 income statement. And then 812, so the discount on bonds payable is going to be kind of uh, accounted for. And then the remaining amount goes to the interest payable. Okay, so that's what we want to kind of do here. Um, and then when we record all these, we're going to get our updated discount account. And there's our interest payable and there's our interest expense. So now we can take this information and create our financial statement. So on the balance sheet, you're, there's your current liability from the ledger. There's the bond payable amount, and we're going to take out that discount, updated discount balance, and you can see that that amount right here. So sixty thousand minus twenty two thousand three hundred eighty three dollars and seventeen cents gives you the carrying value of fifty seven thousand six hundred sixteen. So don't forget, my check is going to go back to the roadmap, and so when I go back to that roadmap, it's got to be between these two numbers, right? The carrying value has got to be between. We got 57,616. So now we're able then to kind of um, finish off. There's our interest expense for 2016. And then um, we receive cash inflow of 57,000. So on the statement of cash flows, which we're going to get to in module 8, uh, 57,578 uh, we received in cash inflow. So now if we go to do our next entry now, our next entry is going to be there is the, um, the interest expense, the remaining of the interest expense, the 4 twelfths, the interest payable we're knocking out, the remainder of the discount on, on bond payables being credited, and then we have our cash payment. So that's the follow-up entry is on 5117. So what I want you to do is kind of go through this problem, study it, Make sure you're kind of understanding a little bit what's going on. Pause the video. Take your time. It's a 13-minute video. And then I want you to go through the first problem. And you're going to turn the problem in um, completed in Schoology. So what you want to do is just kind of fill out. Um, I'll put the document in Schoology. And you just open up the document and kind of complete it in there. Thank you.